Meetings and Briefings Review This presentation is designed to augment the Meetings and Briefing Cheat Sheets PDF document. Here is an example of a meeting or briefing room layout. Visual aids up on the front wall. All meetings will have a ground rules and agenda visual. The rest of the visuals are dependent on the meeting or the needs of the presenters. Presenters should be lined up in order of their presentation along the side so they can quickly move up front when it is time for their presentation. A flip chart on an easel with markers at the front of the room is helpful for note taking. Attendees' positions should be clearly marked on their seats, desk cards, or by wearing position specific vests. Your meetings will always have the same ground rules. Suggested ground rules are number one, silence phones, radios, and pagers unless it involves life safety, at which point you should take it outside and come back into the meeting when the situation has been resolved. Number two, no text messages or emails. Again, unless it involves life safety, at which point take it outside and come back when the situation has been resolved. Number three, no sidebar conversations. Number four, stick to the agenda. Number five, presenters should be lined up off to the side in order of their presentation so they can quickly get to the front. The planning section chief usually runs the meetings and will introduce them by name or position. The presenter needs to be up front with the visual aids facing the audience and must speak loud and clearly so that everyone in the meeting can hear. Number six, hold all questions, comments, and concerns until after the meeting. The only exception to this is the command and general staff meeting. Questions and concerns must be addressed in this meeting so every team member is on the same page. And finally, number seven, maintain COVID protocol if applicable. The incident's initial response is captured in the stem of the planning P and begins when the incident occurs. After notification, the team responds, conducting an assessment while en route and upon arrival. The ICS-201 Incident Briefing contains overview information about the incident and is used as a briefing tool. The 201 includes the following, a mapper sketch of the area of responsibility, situation summary and health and safety briefing, current and planned objectives, current and planned actions and strategies and tactics, current organization, and a resources summary assigned and en route, usually filled out by hand but could be written down on a blank sheet of paper. Initial Unified Command Meeting Remember, Unified Command is made up of multiple incident commanders all presenting a unified front. Discussion items at this meeting include determining who will be part of the UC, consensus on agency or jurisdiction's priorities, resolving any agency or mission conflicts, identifying lead spokesperson for the Unified Command, and negotiate and agree on key decisions. The key decisions include areas of responsibility and boundaries, name of the incident, overall response organization, Location of the ICP, facilities and support needed. Operational period, start time and duration. Who will fill the role of the operations section chief. Composition of the command and general staff positions. Response priorities. Limitations and constraints. Incident objectives. Critical information requirements. And IMT operation guidelines. The wall visuals are, at a minimum and in order, Number one, the ground rules. Number two, an agenda. Number three, an incident chart and or the ICS-201. Number four, the ICS-202 incident objectives. Number five, the ICS-202B critical information requirements and incident response team requirements. If necessary, the ICs may ask for other visuals to be included. The Command and General Staff Meeting. This allows the ICUC to check the pulse on the team and make sure everyone is on the same page. It should be an open environment where staff can air dirty laundry and clear the air. You can have as many of these as you need based on the situation, but you should generally have at least one early on. At these meetings, you'll review the incident objectives and determine which ones are operational and which ones are managerial. Following which, assignments will be made to personnel present as appropriate. A meeting schedule, or ICS-230, will be established during this meeting. The wall visuals will be, at a minimum and in order, Number 1. Ground Rules Number 2. The Agenda Number 3. Incident Chart and or the ICS-201 Number 4. ICS-202 Incident Objectives Number 5. ICS-202A Command Direction 
Number six, ICS 202B, Critical Information Requirements and Incident Response Team Requirements, and ICS 230, the meeting schedule. Next, your team will be preparing for the tactics meeting. During this block of time, the operations section develops strategies, tactics, and organization, consults with directors and supervisors, and completes an ICS 215 operational planning worksheet. The safety officer develops the ICS 215A, the Incident Action Plan Safety Analysis. Logistics and Finance receive the initial ICS 213Rs, resource request forms, and begin sourcing necessary resources for the next operational period. Section chiefs and unit leaders may have meetings with their subordinates as needed. In the tactics meeting, key players review the proposed tactics developed by the operations section and conducts planning for resource assignments. The operations section chief leads the tactics meeting and key participants include the logistics section chief, safety officer, a planning representative, and other invitees. Please note, the incident commander or unified command does not attend this meeting. During this block of time, the team collaborates to identify support needs and assign specific resources to accomplish the plan. Specifically, the Operations Section Chief refines the strategies, tactics, and organization in draft resource requests, or ICS 213RRs. The Logistics Section Chief begins ordering resources for the next operational period. Finance verifies financial support is available for the resources being ordered. The Operations Section Chief provides an update on current operations activities. The Planning Section Chief reviews incident objectives and priorities. Incident Command or Unified Command verifies the incident objectives and priorities are still valid and achievable. The Operations Section Chief reviews the proposed operations plan. Safety reviews the hazards and mitigations for the activities of the operations plan and then reviews the safety plan. The Logistics Section Chief confirms communications, medical, and supply approval. Finance and Administration verifies a proposed plan fits within the budget. The PIO provides a public information plan. The LOFR confirms any interagency issues are being addressed. Finally, the point comes where the planning section chief goes around the room asking each member of the command and general staff if they support the plan. Each member responds, I support the plan. After command and general staff affirms their support of the plan, the planning section chief asks the IC or UC if she or he approves the plan. Once she or he approves the plan, he or she might make some closing remarks. The planning section chief then ends the meeting by reminding command and general staff the documentation they were responsible for in building the incident action plan and gives them a deadline as to when said documentation is due. Before closing the meeting, the planning section chief reminds participants of the meeting schedule. So the desired outcome of this meeting is all command and general staff affirming their support of the plan culminating in the IC or UC approving the plan. This is the final push to put the Incident Action Plan together as a product. Everyone who has forms or information to be included in the IAP must get it to the planning section so they can assemble the plan, check it for accuracy, and obtain approval from the Incident Command or Unified Command. Then the planning section disseminates the plan by making as many copies as needed and getting them to all in a supervisory position. Quick side note to remind you that forms need information from multiple people and sections. In this case, the ICS-204 work assignment requires input from Command, Operations, Resource Unit Leader, Logistics, and the 204 optionally contains information from Safety Officer, Finance, Public Information Officer, and Liaison Officer. The operations briefing is where the plan is presented to those doing the work to solve the problem. It starts with the operations section chief providing an update on current operations. The planning section chief reviews the incident objectives, the ICS-203 organization assignment list, and then next the operations section chief presents the operations plan for the upcoming operational period. The safety officer reviews the hazard mitigations in the ICS-215A. The communications unit leader presents the ICS-205 communications plan. The medical unit leader then presents the ICS-206 medical plan. The logistics section chief presents any logistical concerns. The finance section chief presents any financial concern. The PIO presents any public information concerns. The loafer presents any liaison concerns. And lastly, planning section chief points to locations or areas for division and group meetings, then adjourns the briefing. But it doesn't end there. The planning P is an ongoing process requiring execution of the plan and then continually assessing it. What's working out and what's not working? 
Operations interviews division and group supervisors for feedback. General staff meet with their respective staff to assess operations. And with the help of the command and general staff, the IC or UC will determine if there is a need to update the incident objectives. And it starts all over again, keeping an eye on the next operational period. Thank you for viewing this video.